Good morning, I'm Chris Toich, Forge Extension Specialist at the University of Kentucky's Research and Education Center in Princeton, Kentucky, and I'm going to be talking about cover crop options and considerations for grazing cover crops. So this morning I want to talk a little bit about species for cover crops, focusing in primarily on cool season annuals, which would be the most popular type of cover crops used in cropping systems in the Midwestern United States. I'm going to talk a little bit about challenges and opportunities with establishment, and then grazing management considerations for cover crops, and then finish up by talking a little bit about the potential of harvesting cover crops as conserved forage. So by far the backbone of cover crop and cover crop mixtures are small grains. They tend to be widely adapted. They can be grazed, hayed or ensiled, so they're very versatile. Or even harvested as a small grain if, if economic conditions uh, dictate. Wheat is by far our most versatile. We can uh, use wheat as a, a forage crop or we can use it as a grain crop if, if the economic conditions are correct. If we're using cover crop wheat, it's going to be about $30 per acre to plant it at a forage seeding rate, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Cereal rye is our least exacting in terms of soil requirements, also our most winter hardy and our earliest maturing, and it's going to cost about $50 per acre to plant. Triticale is a cross between wheat and rye, and it has some of the benefits of each. It tends to be better in forage quality than cereal rye, um, but less exacting in its soil requirements than wheat. It's a, a good species for a cover crop, although the prices are going to be a little bit higher, something similar to the cost of cereal rye. And then we have barley, and barley is the most uh, finicky in terms of soil requirements. It really likes well-drained fertile soils, um, and it tends to be about the same cost as triticale or cereal rye. Oats is the last small grain I wanted to mention. It's probably the most palatable of the cover crop small grains. Um, tends to be a little bit lower yielding. Uh, oats come as spring oats or winter oats. However, even winter oats in Kentucky only overwinter about 50% of the time. So as we move into Northwest Ohio, uh, chances of oats overwintering are gonna be pretty slim. The best place to use oats would be as part of a cover crop mixture. So we can mix them with something that's more cold tolerant, like a cereal rye or a wheat, or even annual rye grass. And the oats would provide some very quick growth in the fall, give us some grazing in the fall, and, um, and then probably freeze out in most winters. And the uh, more cold tolerant species would take over in the spring. I want to mention annual ryegrass. I think this is um, a really good cover crop option if it's used correctly. And probably one of our cheapest cover crop options is about $25 per acre to seed at the forage seeding rate. It's high yielding, excellent forage quality, can be grazed, hayed, or ensiled like our small grains. The big difference between this and the small grain is that it regrows after each cutting. So once we remove the growing point with the small grain, um, once that plant starts to join, we remove that growing point. We have very little regrowth after that. Annual ryegrass, in contrast, regrows until growth becomes temperature limited in June. Adapted to a wide range of soils, very consistent production. It, it does require some nitrogen fertilization to uh, realize its full yield potential. Good cold tolerance. But as we move north, it's really important to select varieties that we know have good cold tolerance. Can be a serious weed in small grain, so if we're using it as a cover crop, it's important not to let it go to seed. So if you want to learn more about different varieties of uh, small grains and their associated production, you can go to the UK Variety Testing Program. We have one of the most extensive variety testing programs in the United States. and. Uh, that data is available under the variety testing icon on our UK Forges webpage. And this is actually a report for cereals. These are updated annually. And we also have a report for annual ryegrass. Let's talk a little bit about establishment. And for any forage or any seed to become established, we need good soil to seed contact. And that ensures uniform um, and timely germination and emergence in that stand. 
Unfortunately, broadcasting seed on, whether it's via a high boy or, or a plane over a sanding crop, doesn't really give us good soil to seed contact. We're really counting on an extended wet period um, for that cover crop to germinate and uh, become established. And in many cases, we don't get that in late summer. In general, we're much better off to no-till that seed into the ground, so we're getting that soil to seed contact, um, and we're not counting on that extended wet period. So let's talk a little bit about optimizing cover crop plantings. One, um, consider earlier, earlier maturing corn and soybean varieties. Hard sell to most row crop guys. They're really focused in on, on optimizing that yield uh, in those row crops. Choose herbicides with limited carryover. So when you're planning your herbicide program, make sure you keep cover crops in mind. Uh, harvest fields that you, where you want cover crops first. That's going to give us the longest period to get them established and produce uh, biomass in the fall for grazing. And be ready to establish. So, so don't be looking for seed after you <laughs> harvest your crop. Have it on hand. Have the equipment ready to go so that you can get it planted in a timely manner. What we're really trying to do is optimize that or, or maximize that period between when we plant it and when it gets really cold in the fall so we have the longest possible period for biomass production. If possible, establish with a no-till drill. Seed as early as you can, um, ideally in, starting in mid-August, and that's going to determine how much fall biomass production we get. And use forage seeding rates. If you know you're going to use it as a forage, then you're going to want to use a forage seeding rate. That's going to be about double of what's recommended for a cover crop seeding rate. So in general, these are seeding rates for using cover crops as forages. For cereals um, like rye, wheat, and triticale and oats, we want to be somewhere between 900 and 120 pounds, 90 and 120 pounds. For annual ryegrass, we want to be at 20 to 30 pounds per acre. So let's um, talk about some considerations for grazing cover crops now. First is fence. We've got to have a good perimeter fence. And a good perimeter fence is not one strand of poly wire serving as a perimeter fence. That's, that's a very high liability. We need to have a, a good perimeter fence that if the livestock do get out of the cover crop field or out of that one strand of poly wire, that they're contained and they won't be able to get on the highway and, and um, cause injury to uh, other drivers. We want to make sure we have access to, to clean, fresh water. And ideally, if we know we're going to be grazing cover crop uh, fields on a regular basis, we may consider installing some frost-free waters in strategic locations that will allow us to utilize those fields in late fall or early winter or late winter and early spring when we can still have freezing of watering systems. Grazing should begin once the plants are well anchored. That's going to be six to eight inches tall, and we're going to stop grazing at three to four inches. We want to make sure that we maintain adequate residual height. In general, cover crops um, that are nice thick stands are going to have about 250 pounds of dry matter per inch of growth. So leaving four inches is going to leave us a residual of around 1,000 pounds per acre. That's going to serve two purposes. It's going to leave some leaf area to capture sunlight through photosynthesis and fuel regrowth in that cover crop. The second thing it's going to do is it's going to allow the cover crop to serve as a cover crop. We're going to be protecting that soil by having some residual growth on that field. I like to see animals have free access to a good quality hay when grazing cover crops. Cover crops can be highly digestible and can cause some, some metabolic disorders in animals. And if they're not feeling well, going to a, a higher roughage forage, forage source like a good quality hay uh, can help the animals. We want to make sure we have a, a free choice high magnesium mineral. And then watch out for forage disorders, nitrate poisoning, bloat, or, or grass tetany. We want to utilize uh, ideally rotational stocking and we can make subdivisions with poly wire which is a, a tremendously powerful tool. 
we want to avoid compaction. So we need to have the animals off those fields when it's wet and into a sacrifice area. That's probably the biggest fear of row crop producers is causing surplus compaction with, with livestock raising. So we really need to manage that closely. Spray nitrogen at four to 60 pounds um, in the spring to stimulate early growth. That kind of goes against everything we think about cover crops, right? But if I'm grazing and I want to stimulate that early growth and optimize biomass production in the spring, then I'm, I may need to put a little nitrogen on the spring. And that's going to be on a case-by-case -case basis. So if we've got plenty of nitrogen left from the previous crop, then we probably don't need that. If the previous crop was a really good one and not a lot of plant available nitrogen in the soil, then we may need a little bit to optimize um, growth in the spring. And, and I like to think about using cover crops as a supplement to lower quality forages. So we could be feeding hay and give limited access to a little bit of cover crop at a time to supplement that lower quality hay. Cover crops tend to be pretty high in forage quality. Same way with low quality pasture. We could give them access to low quality pasture and just a little bit of cover crop to kind of improve overall forage quality or supplement that low quality pasture. The last thing I want to talk about is the potential for harvesting cover crops as conserved forage. Um, that can be an additional, additional profit center on the farm. It may fit well into row cropping systems um, by removing that residue as, as a high quality forage, conserved forage, we're actually getting rid of residue that can interfere with planting. Row crop guys also tend to be more comfortable with equipment than, than some of our cattle guys. So um, adding a baler or a mower conditioner is probably not a real big deal for them. We want to harvest at the boot stage, so we don't want to get too mature as it, as it gets past the boot stage. Forage quality decreases quickly, especially with something like cereal rye. We want to harvest as hay leach. This allows for timely harvest. If we're trying to harvest as dry hay, chances are we're not going to have an, enough curing time between when we cut it and when we have to get it down to 18% moisture. So by harvesting as hay leaves, we can cut it one day, usually get it wilted down enough by the next day if we have a good curing day, and then bale it and wrap it or ensile it. Okay, I want to just wrap things up and uh, give you a couple of resources. The first one is our forage extension webpage. Just search UKY forages, it'll bring it right up. And on this page, we have this uh, little corner here called the Forage News. This is published religiously on the first of every month. You can subscribe to this and you'll get a PDF version on the first of every month if you uh, put your news uh, email in this section. Um, one of the things I want to mention about the Forage News is that you're welcome to use it as a source for your newsletters. So if you're publishing a newsletter for your clientele, please feel free to use articles in here in your newsletter. Second resource is the KY Forages YouTube channel. We have over 400 videos related to forage and livestock management, about 4,000 subscribers, and last year we had about 200,000 views on this channel. And uh, this is a great resource for anything forage or livestock related. Just want to mention our upcoming fencing schools. We mentioned how important fencing was for cover crop utilization. We have a school scheduled for April 11th in Scottsville, Kentucky. Still have a few spaces open here. Unfortunately, our school on April 13th is already full. If, if you're interested in fencing, um, please come down and join us in Scottsville. This is an outstanding hands-on program. Second school I want to mention was our Kentucky Beginning Grazing School. It's going to be in April 25th and 26th. This is an intensive two-day program. It covers a whole bunch of topics, including and we're also going on a farm tour and um, planning a grazing system. Excellent opportunity if you haven't been to one of these. To, we'd welcome you to come and attend. And with that, my presentation is done. I think we're going to hold questions till the end of um, all three presentations. Thank you for your time and thank you for tuning in.